What's up, folks? Welcome on board as I take you on another data visualization and mapping journey with R. My name is Milos, and I'm a creator of original maps, which I regularly post on Instagram and Twitter. In today's world, we are so much reliant on different apps for navigation, and one of them is definitely Google Maps where we have this default street view with uh, the names of the streets and also nice roads that help us uh, navigate in space. But sometimes I do like to also import the satellite layer, which also shows me, you know, terrain configuration so that I know where I'm heading to. Now, what if I told you that you also have a powerful ability to create similar topographic maps with R? Yeah, that's right. In today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can easily use open source data from NASA, Copernicus and other sources through a single package and import them directly into R and then create uh, configuration topographic maps for your own area of interest, uh, whether it's a you know, city, a region or a country. I know it sounds mind-blowing that we can just use R and then load all these satellite images of any part of the world, but it's definitely doable and I did it in the past so many times. Now I want to share this knowledge with you and give you the power to create similar maps uh, of any area you want. So here is how we're going to do that. First of all, I'm going to show you how we can load the satellite imagery in R using the elevator package. Next, I'm going to show you how you can easily crop these satellite images to the area of your interest. And then finally, we'll use ggplot2 to create really crisp topographic maps. All right, we are back in R and we are ready to start our adventure by loading several necessary packages. The first one we will load is the elevator package, which allows you to easily access satellite imagery on topography using several APIs. Now, before the onset of this package, you had to go directly to NASA, Copernicus Observatory, Open Topography website, and to navigate your way there and search for tiles or extracts, then download them manually, then crop them, and uh, finally uh, do some data wrangling and uh, make a map. With the onset of this package, and thanks to its creator, Jeffrey W. Hollister, we are finally able to get the extract we need. So the way Elevator works is you simply tell this is the scope for which I need the data and then it returns to you. Pretty awesome, right? The next package we will use is Terra package, which is used for working with raster files. So we will specifically transform our raster file to Terra because working with Terra is much faster than with a raster. The second one is the umbrella package Tidyverse, from which we get some of the most important data wrangling and data visualization packages, such as, for example, ggplot2. Then the SF package we will use to plot national boundaries as well as other polygons in this tutorial. Gisco R comes in handy when we want to fetch national boundaries. And in this tutorial, we will be creating a topographic map of Italy, so we definitely also want to get the national boundaries of Italy, which we will also then use for cropping raster files. The OSM data package is one of the packages that we used in previous tutorials for uh, getting uh, polygons of certain areas. So in this tutorial, I want to use uh, this specific library to fetch a certain region of Italy and then use that polygon to crop the raster file. And finally, MarMap package. In this tutorial, we will use it to get a color scale for our relief map. Let's start off by creating a topographic map of Italy confined to its national borders. Now, the way Elevator works is you need to provide an object signifying certain area, whether it's in the form of data frame, shape file, or raster image. And then Elevator takes that area, finds the tiles that correspond to it, crop them, and then merges them together and returns you a single object. So in our case, what we want is to get the shape file of Italy. And for that purpose, we use Gisco R and the Gisco get countries function. 
we will select a bit lower resolution this time uh, because we want uh, this whole process to be as smooth as possible. And of course, for the country, we can either specify the name of the country, Italy, or the ISO to code IT. And finally, we also transform this object into a WGS84 coordinate reference system. So we fetched the shapefile of Italy, and now we can go straight to Elevator and tell Elevator, look, using this shapefile, please return the raster for this specific area. And the way we do that is through the yet ele raster function. Within this function, we need to specify several arguments. The first one is the object to which you want to prop this raster image and have it returned to R. So locations, we specify country as an object, which is this Italy shape file. The next one is the zoom level. So this is what is going to be the quality of the raster that is returned to you. So it can range from 1 to 14. The higher this value is, the higher resolution it will be returned. So we choose something in the middle. So we choose 7, but you are free to play with this one. And depending on the value you choose, it will also affect the quality of the image you get. And finally, we want to clip this whole file to locations. So we get this and then we plot. So we use Terra to do quick and dirty uh, plotting of this raster file and just check whether we really downloaded the satellite image of uh, Italian topography. And it seems that we did. Now, the second thing is that I want to go a bit here into detail and discuss what we actually see here apart from uh, this elevation map of Italy. So this is a default view of any raster file that you would just simply plot using the default plot or a teraplot function in R. You will see that it has the x-axis, this is longitude, and the y-axis, this is latitude. This is because raster files and usually those coming from uh, satellite imagery, they are uh, in a certain coordinate reference system, so is ours. So in this case, it's WGS84. The second thing you see here are colors. So these represent the elevation levels. And they range from zero, which is basically flatland, to 4,000 more in this case, which is a mountainous area. Now, here, every color is a certain value, right? But every part of this is composed of pixels. Uh, just like you have on your smartphone screens or computer screens, pixels, so you have here. So uh, every raster is composed of them. And the higher the number of these pixels, the higher the resolution of raster is. Guys, retrieving the raster image for the bounding box of Italy is a piece of cake, literally. The only thing we need to change compared to the previous chunk is the clip argument, where instead of locations, we provide B-box, which means the bounding box. So the elevator, on its own, is going to calculate the bounding box of that Italy shapefile, and it's just going to clip the satellite imagery and return to us. So once we do that, uh, we will convert this one so we get a raster object from the raster package But since you're not using really that one we're using Terra in this tutorial Terra is much faster by the way in terms of processing speed So we will convert this one to the Terra uh, raster format before we move on to inspect uh, This raster file by plotting it with the help of ggplot2. I just wanted to show you the main attributes of this file so the first one is class called Spatch Raster. Uh, this is simply the format that exists in Terra to specify raster files, nothing else. Second one is a dimension where we have three dimensions, number of rows, columns, and layers. And in our case, we have only one layer, but rasters can have multiple layers as well. Resolution itself shows you how crisp this is, so how high uh, the level of details is when it comes to uh, pixels. Extent is simply the bounding box, so the minimum, maximum, longitude and latitude values. Coordinate reference system is the next one. In our case, as you can see, it's WGS84. Uh, uh, it comes from um, memory, 
And then the file name here uh, is uh, a bit weird, but this one uh, will come in handy later on uh, when we uh, use it to uh, plot with ggplot2 because we need to coerce a raster file into a data frame. And then the value column will be exactly called like this. So this is simply the, the layer name. And finally, these are the minimum and maximum values uh, because we also now include uh, the Mediterranean Sea. As you can see, uh, there are uh, values uh, below zero. In the next step, I want to really inspect together with you using ggplot2 that we really downloaded the raster file for the bounding box of Italy. And as I said, we need to coerce this raster file into a data frame in order to do that. So because the standard ggplot2 functions such as geom tile or geom raster, they don't really work with images, we need to get a data frame. Now, the way we do this is for every pixel, uh, we will create a centroid. And then we will take the average value of that pixel and then assign it to the centroid. And that's how we will get actually three values in this data frame, X and Y. So these will be the coordinates for that centroid. And the third one will be that infamous uh, file name, which is going to be basically the value column. So if we come to this part, we will first do as data frame and then this function x, y basically equals true means that we want to create centroids and then assign them average values of the pixels. And then we move on to uh, doing the ggplot2. So we use pipes here to directly connect to the ggplot. And in the geom tile, we will plot then this data frame. So we need to specify here X and Y values. So these are the coordinates of those centroids. And for the fill, this is that file name that we will use to fill the values with. And then finally, we will also add the Italy uh, shape file here. This is because I want to really make sure that we downloaded the bounding box and that Italy fits into that bounding box and not somewhere else. And because the default option here will be uh, return uh, blue palette, I'm going to use the yellow um, country border so that there is a nice contrast and that you can uh, really distinguish Italy and the surroundings. So this blue colored area shows you uh, a much bigger topography extending beyond the Italian borders. They correspond to the bounding box of Italy as we can see because the yellow lines which represent uh, Italian borders, they do perfectly fit here. So we did a great job. Now, this blue palette is unfortunate, but it is a default one if you don't specify another one. In uh, bits, I will also show you how you can create uh, already customized palette for the Mar map package to create a crisper uh, topographic map of Italy. Let's say you are not interested in topographic map of Italy or its vicinity, but you are interested only in the certain region of Italy. So you want to crop that region and just discard the rest. Let's say you want to create a topographic map of Sardinia. How do you go about that? How do you create that map? This is what I'm going to show you next. To achieve this, we need to know where in this coordinate space is this region located. In other words, we need to identify its bounding box. Now, in order to do that, we first need to get those minimum and maximum longitude latitude measures for Sardinia in this case. Then based on them, we can then create a polygon, so a rectangular form. And finally, we can crop the raster using that rectangle. The easiest way to retrieve any bounding box is to go to the B-Box Finder website, where you can simply scroll into the area of interest and once you do that, on the left hand side, you can select a rectangle using which you can then capture. So you click and drag and then you release. And once you release, you will have here the bounding box coordinates. So that's how we get bounding box coordinates for uh, Sardinia. We copied those uh, point coordinates for the bounding box of Sardinia and now we pasted them into our editor. And the next thing is to create a bounding box polygon. We do that by first specifying the longitude and the latitude values, both the minimum and the maximum ones. So the X values are the longitude values and the Y values are the latitude values. 
Now, the first one here on the list is the longitude, minimum longitude value. The second one is the minimum latitude value. The third is the maximum longitude value. And finally, the fourth is the maximum latitude value. So we also specify them here through these arguments. I created this because you might want to create some other area. So you can simply plug in your numbers here instead of mine. The next thing is we create a polygon based on these values. If you're not sure how we create bounding boxes, what they are and how we use them in R, you can refer also to the previous video that I created above and this will uh, lead you through this entire process. Back in here, we uh, again define uh, these uh, points here so that we can create a rectangle and then we assign this WGS84 coordinates reference system to our polygon. Our next move is to crop that topographic raster of Italy using this newly created bounding box and we will use Terra again. But in Terra, we also need uh, to transform this SF object, this polygon that we created, into a vector. So we will start off by using first the vect uh, function from Terra. Um, the second thing is we'll use the crop function. So this one is going to uh, basically crop that raster file that we have. And the final but a very, very important step is a mask uh, argument. So this argument will get rid of everything that is outside of that cropped area. So it's going to declare it into null and just drop it. And it will only preserve that area that we wanted to clip. Once again, we call to rescue ggplot2 when we want to uh, visually inspect the newly created raster file. And again, before actually plotting, we transform the raster file into a data frame. Then within the ggplot2 itself, we use geom tile to plot uh, the values from the raster and we use geom sf to plot the national boundaries of Italy. I uh, changed the colors of the boundaries to black so that you clearly uh, see them. And uh, what comes next is only the cropped part of Sardinia, while the rest of Italy is going to remain white. As you can notice, again, we do have a blue area signifying the topographic uh, values, but this time it is limited to the bounding box of Sardinia, while the rest of Italy doesn't have any topography around it. So we did manage to clip it properly. Now you might be thinking, Retrieving the raster layer based on the bounding box of Sardinia is not that bad. But what if I just want to retrieve the raster for the Sardinia lines itself? How do I find those administrative lines of Sardinia? So the easiest way to do that is through the OSM data package, which pulls uh, polygons for uh, regions, countries, cities from the OSM data itself. Now, if you're not familiar with this library, uh, you can check the link to one of my previous videos below where I discuss how you can retrieve polygons for any city in the world. Back here, we first define a region object, which in our case is Sardinia, and then we use the getBB function from the OSM library, which will fetch us a specific polygon for the region we want. And we also say that we want this in an SF format and to be a polygon. In any case, if your object has both a polygon and multi-polygon, so it's uh, essentially a list, you do need to specify within GMSF whether you want to take polygon or multi-polygon. The way you do that is object, dollar sign, and then polygon or multi-polygon as your data. The next thing is that we will um, paint those administrative lines of Sardinian Island in red. We will fill the polygon with light gray. And finally, this uh, red line is going to be a bit thicker. So we indeed managed to fetch those uh, administrative lines of Sardinia. And the next thing we want to do is clip the Italian raster using exactly this polygon. There's not that much difference compared with clipping the raster file using the bounding box, except that we do need to specify that we want a multi-polygon object from our Sardinia SF list. 
everything else is pretty much the same. We also did change the names of this object to region just to reflect the reality because we are dealing with one of Italian regions. Similarly with plotting uh, this new raster object in ggplot2, we first convert it into a data frame and then we pass it to the geom tile function. And we also specify the country borders once again uh, in black and using the same line size. Notice that again we have this uh, blue colored region which indicates the raster that we uh, clipped. But also notice that this time it actually nicely follows this uh, Sardinia region while the rest of Italy uh, simply doesn't have uh, any raster layer. Again, you can do this for any other region of Italy. You simply use the OSN data library, uh, then you download uh, those uh, polygons for any region you want. It can also be a city area. It doesn't need to be a necessarily a region, geographic region, as long as it exists in this OSM database. And the time has come to create a topographic map of Italy using ggplot2. In the following chunk, I will be using the raster that we created after cropping it with the bounding box of Italy, but feel free also to use the one with uh, Italian uh, national borders only or uh, the ones with the focus on a specific region. So here we go. First and foremost, we are going to transform this a raster object into a data frame, this time explicitly creating a country elevation data frame. Second, uh, in this new data frame, as you know from before, we will have three columns, X, Y, and then the value column. Now, I want here to explicitly rename this value column because uh, it has a bit of a clunky and weird uh, name. So I'm going to explicitly name this one elevation. Next thing, uh, we will jump on to ggplot2. And here we will explicitly define that our main object that we want to map is this country elevation data frame. Then, in contrast with the previous one where we use geom tile, I will use geom raster. The reason for that is I discovered with geom tile, if you use it here to plot in ggplot2, um, the final plot is going to be a bit pale. So I tried then reverting to geom raster and actually provided more crisper image. And you will see that in a bit. So within geom raster as geom tile as well, we define three uh, values. The first one is x, the second y, and then finally elevation value. And also I set here alpha value to one, which is the maximum one, because I want these raster colors to be very, very vivid. So the way ggplot2 works is we define this main layer and then we add more and more stuff to it. In the next step, I want to show you how you can easily color your raster files. So we'll be using for that purpose marmap package and specifically it's a topo color. So these are topographic colors which are consistent and based on the elevation value. So for example, using this function, uh, we plot uh, lowlands in some shade of green, hills and mountains are in some shade of brown, and finally the sea level is in the shade of blue. Um, the next step is to define also the coordinate reference system, and if you remember, at the very beginning we defined uh, this uh, CRS long lat, which is WGS84, the very beginning and now we're using it again just to make sure that we are consistent with the coordinates reference system that we'll be using but you can define your own custom uh, coordinate reference systems and then you can plug them in in this chord sf function in this tutorial we won't be using any labels so i left the labs argument empty but feel free uh, to uh, place a title a subtitle maybe even a caption Next, moving to the theme, uh, we are still sticking to the minimal theme, so we want the background to be uh, white and not to have any additional uh, features there. Also, we will remove the legend position here, so it's going to be none. We do have a legend, but it's going to show only the elevation, and we're not really interested in that. Unless you have the preference, then you can specify clearly where you want to have the legend. And uh, finally, uh, we will also specify plot margin and set everything to zero so that we uh, 
minimize as much as possible that white space uh, around our bonding box which is still gonna be there but uh, you can play with this part customize it and set uh, negative values in order to shrink the white space even more so after we wrote uh, this function and we executed we created the country map object next step is to save this plot using ggsave here i just wanted to quickly show you uh, what are the parameters that I chose? So specifically, because Italy, of course, is higher, I chose height to be uh, a bit bigger than the width. Uh, you can definitely play with this one. It, perhaps it will also shrink the white space that appears after saving this. Um, of course, I'm using the PNG format. You can use something else. Um, and then I'm specifying also this country map object and the background is white, which can also be different in your case. And we got it, the topographic map of Italy using the bounding box. You can clearly see here uh, the land topography and uh, different features of it, um, the green color for uh, the lower lands, and then transitioning slowly to the slight brown and brown for the hills and the mountains. Up there in the north, you can clearly see the Alps. Um, and the beautiful Mediterranean Sea, of course, um, everywhere in the middle. Now, um, you could also potentially add uh, the Italian borders here just to um, delineate Italy from the rest, but that's quite optional. I really like it this way because it doesn't pollute that much uh, the image and gives you actually a more broader space. You could also decrease maybe this uh, white margins on the side by just playing a bit with plot margin and also the ggsave options. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you found this tutorial useful. In today's tutorial, we covered a few topics. First, how you download satellite imagery directly into R. Second, how you crop this to the extent of your fitting. And finally, how you can create pretty topographic maps. Specifically, we created a topographic map of Italy, but I believe that you can take this tutorial on a journey around the world and create other topographic maps for any country in the world. Now, if you are just interested in replicating this map, you can find the link to my GitHub repo just below. You can clone it, reuse it, modify it as you see fit. I know that geospatial analysis and data visualization with R can sometimes be very difficult. So I prepared a few tutorials for you. So check them out. And also, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback on this on other videos, you can reach out to me here on YouTube, but also on Instagram and Twitter. See you next time.